<laughs> Sorry about that. Good evening, everybody, and thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Rhonda, um, and we are, are on Lethal Sales. Tonight's topic is how to be human in a in an AI world. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our hosts, Larry Feldman and Brian Maxwell. And we have a really nice crowd in here, and more people are jumping on every minute. But let's start with Larry, because this is his subject. Sure. Um, as everyone that knows me, and I'm sure some of you, it's regrettable that you know me, um, my technical skills are so minimal, they're probably uh, heavily into the negative. Um, however, however, having said that, wherever I go, I make a friend. And I think the thing that we're overlooking to such a desperate, desperate measure is with all the technical advantages of AI, how we're getting less and less connected as people. Um, I, I think I want to advantage everything I can possibly use, but to, to not be involved human being to human being is ridiculous. Troy, you know me. What what was the first thing you heard about me? A is crazy and B always answers his phone. That's it. That's the case. And, and, yeah. Troy, and you're, sure. you're, a, you're a, a, somebody you always want to hang around, that's for sure. Well, that's, that's because not. truthfully, and I'm going to jump to my, my man, Brian Maxwell. And by the way, thank you all for joining us. Um, I had some, uh, this is going to sound really funny and I'm not making it up. I'm going to be in the, the edition this year of who's who. And the lady asked me, what was my outstanding accomplishment? Now I did run a dealership. I got seven CDs out with my band. I made a lot of money in Europe on the second one, blah, blah, blah. I said, how many nice people I've met and the connection I've made. She says, gosh, that's unusual. Usually somebody says I made $12 million. I did this. I get up every day and I'm excited. I couldn't wait to do the show. The people that are on this call, Eric Foster, Bill Roth, Troy Shear, I couldn't wait to meet them. I'm going to tell one more story. I'm repeating myself and I'll shut up and turn, turn it over to Brian Maxwell. There's a guy named Tim Hayden. I hope he joins us tonight. He's a brilliant tech guy, Bill, and we're going to be doing some business with him. And he said, well, I went to the NADA and he said, Larry, I want you to meet two other guys. One of them was Troy. And, um, and one of them, uh, who was our other guy, Troy? No, Joe Boris. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. I, <laughs> Joe's, uh, Troy's had some problems ever since his prison experience. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, long story short, Brian, we got into this restaurant and we turned it out. The nature D came over and he said, is there anything I can help you with? Now, a normal person, which I'm not, would have said, we need more asparagus. I said, yes. How much should I tip the waitress? Because I want her to have my baby. <laughs> the guy sat down, ignored every other patron. And when Troy went back months later for his anniversary, the guy said, where's your team? Mm -hmm. So the key is no robot's going to do that. No robot's going to be empathetic. No robot's going to make you smile. Um, let's use every bit of technology we have, but let's not forget we're human beings. And, mm -hmm. and, man, we all knew what happened, right? Remember the older guys on the show, Don Griff and me, remember 2001, where Hal took over and shut the guy out? Mm -hmm. All right, featured on here is Brian Maxwell. Um, I have to introduce him and not pick on him, Bill, because he's six foot five. And, yeah. <laughs> and a big tent. You know, Brian, um, you. What, what are your feelings? And then let's go around the room. We got a lot of really people smarter than me that we can get their opinion. What do you think about I, I, AI and Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were recently married. Does your wife allow you to have a thing? <laughs> uh, I'm working on that. I'm learning really fast. It's just shortening up on me already. Okay. Uh, you know, I just recently did a post on that because uh, I've learned that there is certain thing that dealerships are starting to do, be a specific store. Obviously, with the AI explosion, everybody hears about how great it works and it can do this and it can do that. And what they're finding is they're putting in certain prompts and it's kicking out words, but it's not having an impact for their salespeople on the phone or in person. Because right. like Larry was saying, words are just words. It's the emotion and the intention that are behind them. So I think the technology is really powerful. Um, I leverage it in certain ways with certain imagery and things like that. Um, but at the same time, I keep myself grounded. We saw what happened with the Carvana approach as far as where everybody was able to do things online, nobody touched it. And I believe that it left such a bad taste in people's mouths that Folks aren't going to fall for that part until, you know, maybe as time goes on and things get a little bit better. But in the meantime, 
even more so with money being tight, it's that human interaction that's going to make the big difference. So I think AI is good as far as if somebody wants to use it for, let's say, creating an outline or generating ideas. But as far as implementation of certain selling strategies or service strategies or phone call strategies, you're still going to require that one-on-one -on -one interaction, that feedback from somebody because that AI is not able to tell you what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. Um, so I think AI is powerful, but the, the human spirit, the human interaction, the human touch will be, will always be irreplaceable. All right, let's just get everybody involved here because we got a hell of a crew. Bill Roth, um, what do you think? I mean, you're dealing with a lot of heavy duty things. What do you think we, what do we have to work on on the balance with AI and, uh, and human beings? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for hosting this and, and including me. Uh, it's great to be with you all. Um, and I look forward to hearing everybody's input on this. I, we use AI. So what I do, I do branding for uh, single point uh, family dealerships on up to usually about 10 location, um, small family owned dealership groups. And we use AI as a tool to analyze uh, consumer reviews across Google and DealerRater and Cars.com and all these things so that we can get an aggregate look at uh, what their customers are actually saying about them. And I was sharing this with you, Troy, the other day, yeah. um, because it, I, that's how I see it. It's, it's a tool. And it, where, AI, where AI falls short is in any form of imagination, right? Creativity, divergence, thinking outside the box. And I think the thing that reinvents a dealership, and that's my message to my dealerships, is now is the time to reinvent yourselves and the thing that does that is human creativity, it's uniqueness, it's strategy, it's those things that uh, AI can't pull off because AI looks behind us, right? The human brain has the capacity to look forward. So that's the difference that I see. Why it doesn't concern me, um, I think it should concern any of these marketing agencies that are essentially using it to write content or what I call, you know, marketing mills, right? They're just pumping out crap all day. Sorry, the <laughs> language here. But they're just pumping out stuff all day long that has no meaning to anybody. So human, like what you said, Brian, it it gives it human humans, you know, that all the technology, at least, at least what we can see right now is not going to replace human ingenuity. And I think that's good for us because the day that it does, we should all watch out, right? And I don't think, I'm in the camp that signed the, the Elon Musk thing that I'm concerned about it because I don't want to see it replace billions of jobs because mm -hmm. then what are we left to do, right? Work the mines. And <laughs> so, I agree with you. I, I agree now with the you good news mind. is that was brilliantly stated. The bad news is I double checked while he was talking. Bill Roth does not exist. He's a computer generated program. <laughs> Very dangerous. Uh, I know, I know Tony Oletta. It is well, not one second, one second, Larry, because I have to add something to what um, Bill just said. I've been reading that Google is going to start penalizing people who use AI written websites. Uh, yeah, so, because right now for plagiarism, I mean, that, that, that's really it, happening. And y'all can y'all and I, I'm going to turn it back over. So for the next person to go, but we, humans are pick up on things really fast. It's like you can already tell an AI generated post or article already already it's something about when you're reading it yes. and it has the right words but it just doesn't have that feel to it you know that that i don't even know how you explain it maybe one of y'all wait, wait, wait a minute wait a minute wait, wait, wait a minute peter what's wrong with plagiarism uh, our our current president ugh, has been accused twice of plagiarism we said we so weren't apparently going to. it's not an impediment all right, all right, listen. This part of the podcast will be edited out. Yeah. So we <laughs> Bro, if you edited out the offensive part, other than Rhonda saying hello, the whole show would be going with me on. I got my boy, Tony Aletta, um, who is as real as they come. Tony, what's your feeling of dealing with, with uh, AI as opposed to being human? I agree with what everybody's saying as far as it being a great tool. It, and that's just what it is. It's when people start getting lazy and relying on autoresponders, AI responses, AI chat services, without the human emotion attached to it. Because if you give 10 salespeople the same script, there's going to be a couple guys that do better than the rest because of the personality, the emotion, you know, the uh, the conversation. Just, again, you can tell when you're reading something that's been written. It's, it's, al it's almost too perfect, right? It's, it's grammatically perfect. People like the little imperfections. 
you know, they, they like to know they're dealing with another human because, hey, they make mistakes, too. It's just you, you're never going to just like they thought you could sell cars online. Someday we're going to go online. People aren't going to go online. People want to come to a dealership. They want to deal with a salesperson. They want to drive a car. They want to go through the experience. Hey, hey we've got, it looks like we've try. got it looks like we got April Simmons. on. April, are you there? I'm here. I'm actually on my cell phone in an office, but I, I wanted to hear what you all had to say on this topic. Well, Welcome, we've, we've, April. Had, we've had Thanks seven or eight salient, brilliant points, and I've been babbling as usual. Um, well, perfect. One of the so things, it's, it's a good one, night. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things I do in my classes that I think differentiate me from mm -hmm. most people, I'm not talking about Maxwell. Maxwell rolls the way I do, is I don't teach scripts. I teach people to think, to actually to listen, to hear, to really understand what people are saying. I say it every damn show. I'm repeating myself, April, forgive me. I love to ask, what do you say to the guy that says, I have 10 minutes, I got to go watch my son or daughter play ball. What does your son or daughter play? When we take out the human end of this, we're dead. I love when I get a geek on, a geek, one of these people that like, you know, has no personality, no sex life, but they're really good with computers. I love to ask them, do you like it when you get 10 phone prompts and then you get hung up on? No, I hate that. Well, so does everybody else. Bingo. We've got to keep it human. April, there's nobody well, more human than April. April, tell me what your feeling is balancing AI with being human. This lady well, is so brilliant and so per has so much personality, it's scary. Well, I appreciate that. And I will tell you, I actually had a conversation earlier this morning um, about AI with, with some folks that are, you know, looking on building, you know, the next greatest thing. And, and I said, hey, the first thing I would do is when you go try to sell it, don't tell somebody it's AI. Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I've had so many bad experiences at this point. If I'm not one of those people that understands that things change and get better a normal dealership would kick you out before you even start if they've tried anything AI already. So for the vendors out there, I mean, I, I would honestly make sure you come up with some other terminology to call it and then be honest about what you're actually selling and what AI can actually do. Because in my experience, what I'm sold, what I'm told is not what I get. So I go in buying a Cadillac and come out with a hoopty. So um <laughs> That is that is definitely not the, the situation. And to your point, Larry, it's I'm a big believer that AI will never replace replace humans. Um, I think there's a lot of ways that it can enhance what we do. Um, is it better than a press one, press two? Perhaps if, if AI can just answer a customer's simple question without, you know, 90, 90 minutes of, of chat, right? While I'm waiting for somebody to actually pick up the line or I'm waiting for somebody to tell me, you know, how many, um, what the hours of the dealership are, you know, the simple stuff. Yeah, I think AI has a place to do some heavy lifting on the bullshit. But Wait when it but, comes- but, but, but April, think about you, you as, as usual, she always nails the point. Think about how, to use her technical car term, the bullshit runs wild. We're in a situation where if you ask most people, I'm getting political for a second, excuse me, about <laughs> who they voted for, the answer they give you will have no correlation to why they voted for him. Before we got on the air, Brian Maxwell, who was an avowed conservative, was talking about his father, who's an avowed liberal. And his answer to about the cocaine in the White House was it belongs to Don Jr. <laughs> At which point, Rhonda said, it's been three years. And I said, and there's no way Hunter Biden would let good blow lay around for three years. <laughs> We've all seen the woman who her daughter called. And when it wasn't her daughter, it was voice generated AI. So when you're dealing with a society of people that have stopped trying to think and just mm -hmm. whatever they see on the Internet. Right now, remember the joke it used to be, it has to be real. I saw it on TV. Now it's right. I have to be real. I saw it on the Internet. When right. you're making it easier to fake things. You know, th th we've taken Photoshop to a scary level. That's what I'm concerned yep. about. I'm going to piggyback yep. on what April said. Um, and April, you're right. With everybody, you got everybody and their mother right now is being an entrepreneur and a quote unquote creative, whether it's copy, marketing. And this is why Larry, myself, I think Don, Peter, some other people who still are capable and willing to go on site, that's going to go on the rise again because all of these online programs and creative yeah. crap that people are doing and dealerships are biting into it. Like April said, once they get burnt once, 
off that specific person. Y'all know how hard it is to get them to open back up again and being live and on site with that human interaction. The value of that, I believe, is going to increase over the next couple of years as this phase, as we continue to transition into this AI phase. It's actually going to be good for business. Hey, Brian, we got we got one of the sharpest guys you'll ever meet. Crazy as me, but sharp as attack, Troy Shear. Troy, Troy's ahead of every damn trend. Troy, what do you think about uh, the uh, the artificial intelligence? And I appreciate before the show you saying any kind of intelligence would help you, Feldman. <laughs> but no, I think like what, what April's saying. I mean, it's it's great. And, and Bill, like I said, we we talk about it. Actually, he and I just had a conversation yesterday, and I, the stuff is great for the heavy lifting and the things like like Bill talked about about gathering data and just being able to to get those things together. But when it comes to having a human interaction, it's, you know, Larry, like you said, I think I've, our, our pastor and church said it this week, hey, we're, we're, we're all so connected. We're more connected than ever, but we're not close. Yep. There, it's it's a, a false sense of connection. And it's like, you know, what we have right now here, we got great technology to do what we're doing. But if you didn't have the human interaction, you'd be sitting staring at a screen. Right. And I think that's, that's, because, that's because real simply said. OEMs can't sell cars, computers can't sell oh. cars, AIs can't sell cars, salesmen can sell cars, period. Right. But it's, and it's, nobody's it's really going to realize how, realize the truth of that for probably, what, another year? Everyone's still on the it, high it, of, April, of, of all this other stuff. Yeah. Don't say salesmen, say salespeople. Because we we don't want to be sexist or in any kind of controversy. Well, no, you have thing. to say I, sales I, them. It's sales. Yeah, and them. I don't want <laughs> and I don't want I don't want Brooke Furness coming to my house and punching me in the nose. It's a sales them. I heard somebody say it the other day. It blew my mind. Uh, okay. that's, that's it, a sales guys, them. Guys, guys, you're kidding. You're kidding. Just, oh God. Quickly, quickly on this. You can see well, you can't see it because my stupid it's a calculator. That's a tool. It requires human interaction, just like AI does. Mm -hmm. This binder that I have here is a 200-page SOP that I used AI to create for the dealership I'm in. It's the heavy lifting. That's all we need it for. We don't right. need it for anything else. It's like, how, how monotonous is it to, to rewrite a, a simple <laughs> program for, for a dealership just to change that one word? Send, Put it in, change it, boom, move on. That's the only thing AI is good for in our business, other than capturing data and deciphering it so humans can look at it and say, this is the way to go. Because if we listen to computers all the way along, we'd be like my Tesla wrapped around a guardrail on, <laughs> on the highway. Uh -oh. hey, You've got to take it to another we... level too, though, Peter. A lot of people are using AI but like myself, I had I got access to over 190 prompts. Now, prior to me knowing those prompts, I mean, I didn't even realize how elementary I was. And I probably am still elementary. So you got people using AI to just say, oh. write a sales letter. And little do they know, it is so specific and so detailed. It'll write you a sales letter. And people have the confidence that this is it. It came from AI and send it out and it bombs. And yeah. so even with that, if you are going to use it without knowing the prompts and how to interact with the technology, it's useless, like Troy was saying about Zoom. Yeah. Brian, hey, John Locke, what, what, what's your opinion there, my buddy? John, uh, John uh, uh, what's his name was talking? Um, uh, Troy was saying something. He got oh, I'm sorry, Troy. Go ahead. Uh, that's, he's Larry always just kind of pushes me to the side like that. I see how it goes. <laughs> no, but you're you're right with as far as the prompts and things like that. It's like you can put something in there and it's it spits out and you go, this is crap. <laughs> and, and again, because it's a basic kind of thing, I was I was watching, uh, listening to Gary Vee the other day, and that mm -hmm. was one of the things he said. It's like, yeah, AI is here, but you've got to know how to use it. If you're just slapping crap in, it's, it's garbage in, garbage out, the same kind of thing. And that's why it requires yep. that human, it still requires human uh, ingenuity, thought, intelligence, thinking to be able to go, this is what I'm trying to accomplish and why I'm trying to get this. And to really, like you said, delve into a, a very speci specific <laughs> um prompts so that you're getting out what you want and even with that the stuff i've seen is like you still have to go through it and go okay this yeah. is a great foundation but there's like you said a lot of it is just very stiff and there's no you know personality or anything like that to it it's just so, like Troy, Troy, let me ask you a question think about the natural negative extension of of where don hold on one second think of the and then we'll jump to you think of the natural negative extension 
It used to be people like me that really think, gosh, I'm a little dumb. Let me see what I can learn. I'll read anything I can. And if something intrigues me, I'll find out who the author is. That shortened to, well, I don't read. I saw it on the internet. It was four lines. <laughs> I don't, listen, I, I'm not, I don't lack confidence, but you really got to lack confidence to say, I'm not even capable of expressing myself. Let me turn <laughs> it over to a computer. How sad is that? All right, we, we got, we got Don and my buddy, John Lockett. Don, you spoke up. Go first. Uh, don't jump to Johnny. Get Alan. Invented by scientists. Is there a scientist in the room? <laughs> no. Huh? No, no, not this one. Again, you know, going back to Troy about being so specific and all the instructions and all the prompts, I saw something on uh, another um, session I was on, and there were 180 prompts that, that yeah. they're talking about. You got to be so specific. Who has time in our profession to be that spe specific? We're going to look for the top 10. That's how we're built. Are we built to look at 180 to find the best one? No, we're going to be on a conference like this. Someone's going to tell us, I tried this one and it was great. No, <laughs> Alan's going to say, no, I tried this one and it was better. And then Brian's going to say, I got you beat. I tried both of them and they suck. <laughs> John no, Locke, what do you have to say, my brother? And then I want to jump to my buddy, Eric Foster, who's who kind enough to join us. What do you think? No worries. John? Listen, uh, I, I agree with what's been said thus far that really AI is nothing but a tool for us to use. And when it comes to communications, the thing to remember is AI does not express body language. Hey. AI does not have a tone of voice. AI might give you some words, but if you don't have the body language to go along with it and the tone of voice, what good is it? Yeah. Don, is it okay, John, if I jump back in before we go to Eric and Al and quote Dr. Albert Meridian? I did a study and I had to quote this guy and it broke my heart because he said only 7% of what we communicate is the words. That's so right. 93% is the tone and your body language. And fifty-five percent body right language, thirty-eight percent right. tone of voice. I use that same that exact stack too. You, you guys use yep. 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 Eric Foster, what do you got to say? And boy, is it good to see you, my buddy. Larry, thanks for the invite. I'm dialing on my phone as well. So uh, here's how we approach it, right? You ever have to like write something up and you just give it to like the dumbest intern to do a first draft <laughs> because you're like, ah, they'll write it out and we'll figure it out from there. That's how we take it. We, our yep. take on it. Like, let someone else do the grunt work. It's going to be terrible, but it's a lot easier to edit than go after the first one. Have some basis to work off of that you're going to actually use a real human to understand what the hell's going on, what makes sense, to make it personable and actually have something that makes sense to another human. So like everybody else said, I think it's a tool, but I treat it as like AI is the dumbest intern on your team. Let them do the grunt work and then you actually use your, your intelligence and your experience mm. to do something better. That's a good analogy. So, so yeah, he well said, said dumb, dumb intern. And uh, Don Graff um, uh, said suck. I never thought I'd be on a show, Bill Roth, and I'd be the least controversial person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to dial back to my AI and find more hey, ways. Larry, to Larry so. it's true. We use it for the dumb stuff. Like, I, I, I got it to write the SOP. It took about three days to write it, and it, it's taken me... 10 days to edit it so that it actually right. <laughs> right. But for, any, for anyone's concerned um, that the tour is officially over so it is okay that Peter is wearing Elton John's shirt there's no controversy <laughs> you know that Mike Larkin is on the phone I mean Mike Larkin is on the call and like from a marketing perspective uh, the gentleman earlier I think I think his name was Eric or, or that, Eric that was, Foster that was Eric okay and, yeah. and when he was explaining how they use it for marketing I do believe it can be good for marketing i've been learning some things about it but it's like uh, i think it was john just said or troy when, even when you have it responding for you if you look at the way it responds it is horrible and i think it can actually negatively impact people that are coming to a site or interacting with a dealer site mm -hmm. and turn them off where they won't come back at all i think the new chat bots are worse than the ones that we had Four or five years ago, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it's because we're more familiar with him now. Ryan, have know. you ever have you ever had a conversation with Mike Lark? Yeah. Okay. 
Mike Larkin, guys, this is a compliment, not a knock, is so sweet on the phone. That it, it, like if you're a diabetic, you go into a coma. <laughs> hey, how are you? Thanks for taking my call. No damn robot's going to do that. No AI program's going to do that. I, I was on a Bill Roth. I spoke to Bill Roth about doing business. I said 97 things that made no sense. And at the end, he went, I think I like you. Yeah, now, if it was a computer program with here's the facts and nothing but the facts, right? We're, we're back to the old, old expression. There's lies, damn lies, and statistics. Alan, obviously, yeah. you took the time to get dressed in your Patriot shirt. Oh, you probably yeah. haven't heard about the Brady trade. What do you think about uh, AI versus <laughs> human? Well, look, everybody else whoa, whoa, whoa. on this call. This is the guy everybody that I started else. my this is the guy that I started my band with five million years ago and co-wrote my book, Inner Moron Demons. All right. Everybody else on this call has sold hundreds of cars, maybe thousands of cars. I'm your customer. I don't sell cars. Mm -hmm. So I I listen to everything that's going on here, and I'm thankful that every person so far has said it takes personal interaction. You have to talk with someone. You have to learn about your customer. You have to help your customer find a solution. That's the most important thing when it comes to doing what you do. AI is window dressing. It's mm -hmm. there. It's nice that it's there, perhaps, but it's never going to sell a car. Uh, I, I just don't. I just don't see it. Again, I'm not in your business, so I don't necessarily know. But I know from the other side. When I walk into an auto dealership or any place where I want to buy something, I'd like some help. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd buy it online. Right. Hey, Alan, not not only can it help yeah. you sell a car, it can blow a deal up. Yep. Because yep. has everybody on this call complained about something nicely, not screaming, and you get a form letter or you get like a robot voice that says, <laughs> We're glad you called us. I don't want you to be glad. Put somebody on the damn phone that can help you. Hey, Mike, right. let's hear that cheerful voice, my buddy. Yeah, buddy. Hey, um, Alan, you're yes. on the other side. Uh, you're on the other side, right? So Correct. when when you are like considering buying a car, what are the first things you hear? You might go across the street. Hey, nice new car. Where'd you get it? And you're recommended. You're, you're referring. They're referring to you to. Hey, I got it on Hoffman Chevrolet. Great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You ought to go down in there and see Mike. And you go, yeah, I might do that. The, we're, we're doing is we're doing the statistics from the outside looking into the car dealer, not from the car dealer looking outside saying, what am I going to do with attract people? So you as a customer or consumer might, and I'm not saying that all of them, but hell, Google's now a verb. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so you go on Google and you type in Hoffman Chevrolet. Okay, you know what? Vanilla, right? Okay, and you go to the reviews. And hats off to the car, the car industry. They have not hundreds, but hundreds, maybe thousands of reviews, and they spent over a decade putting that into their their process. So whenever you go to a service station or a, a you know just bought a car, they're gonna um, they're gonna ask you, hey, would you mind sending a, a review for us? My right. boss is cream, you know, he's he's really getting on my back about this stuff. I could lose my job. That's what my sister was told in in 20, uh, 2014. <laughs> She's like, what's with these guys, Mike? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but now they've got hundreds of thousands of reviews. The, the point is they are ignoring those reviews because it's on the outside right. of the car dealership. And that's the most important thing. Those people that wrote those reviews, those are your VIPs. Those, if they, you know, if they got a one star review and they said, these guys suck. Well, you know what? By you not writing a response. It's you, Alan, that are reading those reviews. These, these guys don't engage with their customers. Right. I, hey, Mike, I'm going elsewhere. Mike, but think, Mike, think about this for a second. You uh, go to a dealer's website. You could be turned on. You could be turned off. But the people that are successful in, in our field are the people that build enough personal relationships that they get word of mouth referrals in. Right. So, it's, yes. it, it, again, yes. it just shoots down the whole argument of turning this over to a computer and letting them handle people want to talk to people, not robots, 
not get props. So it, it just it just absolutely positively I'm magnifies the argument. I'm yes, an but but, there, but what, I, where do I, I, I go first? Right. I oh, oh, hold on, we got yeah, my... Paul Robson in here. He's oh, he's that's my man. I was wondering what Paul was. We may back. have to get back to the halfway house. What's up, Paul? <laughs> versus Sorry. AI. Paul is yeah, hilarious. My... My parole, officer, my, brother. my parole officer helped me a little longer tonight. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> now, was it a real parole officer or was it some artificial intelligent person that wanted to check to see if, you know, if you've been drugged? Yeah, Robocop. It was. Robo it was Robocop. Yeah. That's who it was. It was Rutger Hauer. And, uh, <laughs> but at his current age. So <laughs> I'm Mike, sorry I joined doing? late. Um, so catch me up. Somebody catch me up. And, I'll uh, catch up. We're, we're talking about the fact that in an era where people are already disconnected and already removed from answering the phone, from smiling, from holding the conversation, now if we lean too much on AI, we take it one more step further removed from emotion and feeling and personality and, and how that absolutely positively misses everything. Listen, Paul, mm -hmm. let me, before he answers, he's on mute. Paul sent me, a uh, Paul and me are not uh, teenagers. And he sent me a joke about the diving horse in Atlantic City. And he said, I knew I got it. We both smiled. We were both glad we texted it back and forth and called. It's about being human. And to me, everybody on this call and everybody whose brain works has the greatest advantage in the world against people that refuse to communicate or don't understand the importance. So having said all that, my good and great friend, what are your thoughts on keeping the human side or injecting it into AI? Paul, one second before you start that. I just want to throw this out because it's really, really quick. Just piggyback on Larry while it's still there. I literally got a call today from a gentleman named uh, Bob, Wood, Bob Woods. He's the GM for Porsche of the Ghetto Group. And he literally called today. He said uh, the owner of their company has sent some videos over. But he, I, I, he's been in my email cycle for about four months. And we've never had any communication. But the last three messages that I sent you know, I kind of did something different just with me, just more so. He called today because he said, Brian, at first, I thought you were just an AI bot that was spamming me with just articles and with messages. And he was like, but when I started reading your last few messages, I could tell you were human and I wanted to call and make sure. He literally called because the message, which came from a real human, no AI, he even could decipher that, you know what, this seems kind of real, but before I think it's something, let me reach out. Even he said he ignores his email because most of it is AI crap and spammy stuff. And he said, that's why it took so long for them to even notice that I had been sending anything. So I, I apologize, Paul. Go ahead. I just wanted to piggyback on what Larry was saying. You are before. sitting in front of a green screen, Brian. Just, just saying. <laughs> just saying, man. No, actually, the green screen is real. Brian is computer generated. Well, I listen. I'm. I'm squarely on the side of human, if it's human versus AI, but I don't think it is. I think it's human and AI together. We're, it's amazing we're able to do the things we're able to do and, and build these kinds of tools, you know, and, and, and when we use them for good purpose, it certainly is. But it's certainly not good purpose if now I, I can't, in my daily communication, decipher whether or not something is real or Memorex or, and those of you too young to know, well, most of the people here know. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, but my point would be this, and I, I, I think it's pretty straightforward now. However, not going to be easy, which is the person or the, the, the groups who go out and purposefully be even more human than you can possibly be. Like, in other words, be like Larry. That would be my new saying. Like, you can't find a more human human than Larry, right? We've got it. So we're, if we're not that way, or if our teams aren't that way, because they're, let's just say, born in a digital age or coming up in that digital age, now the advantage that will happen is for those people who are able, able to make the human part stand out so that it's clear that they're being, you know, who, you know, who is human and who is using AI. That That's my first part. And the second part, I would just finish with this is, um, I put a, a video on online. I don't know which channels might have been LinkedIn, but if you guys remember that old American Airlines commercial where the guy starts and he's got his whole sales team around him and he says, gentlemen, ladies, our biggest customer fired us today. And he goes on to say, you know, we got to do things different. 
you know, and it's funny because he dates the whole commercial by saying it's a phone call or a fax. And, you know, I just think to myself, God, we could redo that commercial now and put in there all these things that we're talking about. And they say, you know, and so he goes on to say, folks, we got to do things differently. And, and, you know, the he gets handed a, a bunch of plane tickets and he goes around. He says, we're going to go and visit all of our customers again and face to face. Business used to be done with a handshake. And that's, you know, what we're going to do. And so as the commercial ends, the, the one of the salesmen at the desk says, hey, Larry, to the boss, what, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to go visit that customer who fired us today. Mm -hmm. The commercial ends. And I think, you know, that was a, probably 30 years ago and it's resonating again today. So, you know, I, I close with this just to say, be as human as possible and, and more so. The rest of those things will get figured out over time. But right now, I don't want to be the one who, to Brian's point, am I get? Is it real or is it is it really Brian or is it not? I yeah. want it so clear that it's not. Well, it it and think about it. You're now diving into accountability. Um, what I always was in the habit of trying to stay in touch with my customers, helping them make service appointments, checking on them when they were in service, and it wasn't just a matter of I liked them. I didn't want to let anything I did on the front end get a little screwed up on the back end. Like maybe the service tech got tied up and you didn't have time to call. We It seems like we're very big on, remember the old circular of, of firing squad, whose fault is it? And everybody point to the right. <laughs> if, we, if we don't understand how important it is that it's our life and it's our business and these are our friends and our customers, where are we? I, mm -hmm. And all we've ever seen with machines is how unreliable they are. Yeah, we're all used to them and we, they get around and, and we're there. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's the thing of the self-driving car. Now, I might be dating myself, Paul, but I don't want a damn computer driving me around because there's plenty of times that my phone doesn't work or my computer shuts down. I'd rather that not happen on 95 when I'm doing 90 miles an hour. Yeah. So it, I, the more we understand what we, we can accomplish – don't matter if you're smart, you're dumb, you're this or that. What we can accomplish if we reach out to people. And, and listen, I don't want to sound like a psychologist. I could probably use one. But we all realize, because we're all successful what we do, how the smallest gesture can mean something. You smile mm -hmm. at somebody or you ask them how they're doing on a bad day, and you change their whole day around. You may change their whole world around. And, and how are you going to lean on a machine to do that? And the piggyback on that now, though, they got these intelligent AI uh, videos that I've seen where they created, it was a computer, an AI-generated human being that was selling a product online. And I was like, oh, my God, who in the world? And it, it wasn't very good, but you know, but that's the start of it. It's kind of like self-checkout in the Circle K gas station. I saw that. I said, my God, you know, they putting these people out of business. So I still think it's going to be a boom for uh, brick-and-mortar services that can physically reach out, touch, be on site to implement things. I, I just believe the value of that, like April said, we're probably going to ride this way for about six months to a year before all the backlash of all of the, you got people quitting their jobs because they think they're about to be millionaires because they got access to this program. It's nuts. So I say everybody on here, get ready and make sure your prices are right because I really do believe we're going to see a serious boom uh, for those that can do. Right. And, and like I Brian totally says, agree. Yep. Can, can, can I make AI one more point too, Larry? Go, Go ahead. ahead and finish. Like, okay. One other thing that came up this morning that I didn't know, didn't think about, but something that I think everybody should be really um, dived into is understanding when we say the word AI, that if you are using AI, it better be proprietary AI. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people now are using chat GBT and some of these other tools to make the AI more powerful. Nothing wrong with that. But when I start to utilize it, let's just say, hey, chat GBT, write me, um, here's my processes. Can you write me up a um, training session for ABC? Well, when I train chat GBT on how I do things, I'm basically sharing my secret sauce with ChatGBT, and now my competitors can ask ChatGBT, how do I beat April Simmons and her group? Right. And yeah. these are things that I don't think that, I mean, most of us dealers don't even, like, we just have faith in what you say, here's a check, and I, I hope it works. 
<laughs> but in all reality, this is one of those times where accountability is going to be key to understanding how these things work. Or you not only may have something that just causes more friction instead of helping, but you might actually make your, you know, blow up your entire organization by putting stuff out there um, in the in the AI world that now actually comes back to bite you in big ways. That's a she's, good point. She's talking about private, security. Yeah. She's talking about security, accountability, and compliance. And if yeah. you don't think those aren't important issues right now, um, it's scary what's what's going to happen to our proprietary industry. Proprietary information in general. Yeah, proprietary info, period. You got people to use it for code. Now, I saw that they do new, they have the upgraded feature, which um, I did take advantage of that because uh, it gives, a, it does have more perks to it. But you're right, you're right though, uh, April. I didn't even think about it from that point. Uh, any date I'm putting in and I use my name and, certain things relevant to myself that is there now. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. for, for anybody who doesn't know who April is, she works with the Horn Group. Um, if there's anybody sharper in her field, I haven't met her yet. Uh, she, she's all there. Um, what does she do? April, <laughs> tell, tell, this, tell this fool what you do. This is what happens when all you do is, is listen to AI. Don't know who April Simmons is. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Go ahead, April. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Uh, you know what? I, will, I, I tell you why. I, the thing I've come to the realization, I'm going to get a business card printed and it's just going to say April Simmons, Horn Auto Group, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> because that is what my title should be. <laughs> <laughs> April, I, I know a, April's, uh, April, April's always so busy. She can't even, she can't even, you know, take a phone call when somebody calls her. No, that's <laughs> I true. Know that. Like it's, it's legit. <laughs> Troy is not wrong. Troy is one of my favorite humans and I've had, I am so busy. I, I do all of our corporate internet and marketing directors, my technical title. Um, but I oversee all of the FTC stuff. I, I help in pretty much all things operations. When we buy new stores, I project manager those. So et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's just a better title and that's what I think I want to go with. Yeah, but I think April. Business cards are getting printed. <laughs> April, the reason I, I'm so glad you joined us, A, I love you anyway, but B, she's living proof. Brian, she does so much technical stuff and so much compliance stuff that you would think she'd be a nerd. She's the most likable person you'll ever meet. Uh, she sounded like big, a marketing. She had that marketing talk. And that's why I said, what does she do? Because Gail, yeah, but, she, she reminded me of Gail. So that's why I said, she, she marketing, like but pers but marketing and personality tied together in a way which is exactly the theme of this of of this show. I, mm -hmm. uh, Tony, I haven't heard from you for a while. Uh, did you fall asleep at your desk or do you have something salient to say, my brother? Oh, uh, no, I'm just observing. It's a great conversation. <laughs> I did not fall asleep. T Tony's uh, where, where uh, April's card is going to say, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tony's is going to say, we'll work for cheesesteaks. Me and him are, 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 are keeping steak sandwich places in business. Don't get jealous, jealous Alan. Me and him are constantly. We got a gold car. <laughs> Why did you bring that up now, knowing I can't get one within 900 miles of here? Yeah. Bro Brobson, uh, Brobson is a brilliant guy from Jersey who decided to move to Atlanta and woke up one day and said, I'm hundreds of miles away from a cheesesteak. All I can eat is falafel. That's your mistake. <laughs> You should have consulted AI. They can tell you where to get good food. I'm sorry, bro. I slipped off. The they got good uh, bacon uh, down here. I'll tell you what, right there. <laughs> oh, you got how many? Who? How many people on here? I know John has one that do have more so um, online platforms where that that's one of your primary um, sources that you promote to stores. The question is, what are you doing? What are y'all doing to combat that onslaught of you got brand new? People jumping in the game. I know what I deal with, with the offline trainers. And, you know, I sell a few courses online. But what are y'all doing to combat the onslaught of new people that are going to muck up the waters for a while? John, I see you smirking. What are you, what are you Go ahead, John. Let's hear it. Well, you know, I'm not doing anything specific except sticking with my game plan. Right. I have a very simple solution, a, a software platform that I use to help dealers sell more vehicles by having built in some psychology, not artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, I'd love to be able to show it to you. It's a standalone, simple to use. It has to be simple because I invented it. Mm 
<laughs> now, I didn't write the code and I didn't put it together, but having been a salesperson and having been in management, I know that the simpler the tool is, the easier it is to use and the easier it is to convince people to use it, especially when you explain the why behind it. So I'm not going to compete necessarily with AI because what I have is unique and I plan to keep it that way. And with Unless, the US, you have real people on the videos, even still, like you got yourself or um, as far as the training materials in it. So you still have real human uh, uh, aspects to it that, you know, some of these other, I see online portals now that don't have one person in it. It's literally a computer generated voice with the words popping up on the screen with different pictures and video clips going behind it. I'm sure y'all have seen it. It's nuts. Yeah, and how about, and Brian, how about when the video voice is so robotic? By the way, <laughs> it, this might be a, a precipitous time to announce uh, John Locke and I are going into our partners. We're going to be represent. We just signed a contract with Big Pharma. We're going to be on a commercial together for manic depression. He'll be one <laughs> voice, I'll be the other. Guess who's who? <laughs> Now, Larry, <laughs> should, should right. we reveal to these folks that I have a background in psychiatric nursing and psychosocial rehabilitation? Oh, and my God. And I've been working together. John, how, John, how else could you be in partners with me, my brother? John, <laughs> John, it's it's Mr. Didn't... Rogers meets the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Bill, what do you, what do you, we know you're reaching out to big groups and, and pushing what are you doing to separate yourself from the pretenders that are robots? <laughs> uh, I, man, they gotten so good. You can't tell who the, who the robots are. Um, you know, I, I guess I, I would like to go back to what April was saying just about, um, you know, any kind of business is built on its intellectual property and its defensibility, its brand. Right. And uh, I, I just see that, AI as a practice is only kind of proliferating poor, the poor results of me too marketing. Yeah. And I see these platforms that promise the moon, you know, the, all the, all the bells and whistles in the kitchen sink. And mm. it doesn't even add up to me. It's like, well, how can you, how can you promise that to 18, 17, 18,000 dealerships across <laughs> the land? That's OEM, not even considering independence, right? How can AI, uh, figure out the POV. I mean, that's what drives uh, differentiation in a business is its unique point of view as a entity, as a, as a business. And so um, I just have a lot of questions. I I'm, I'm like you guys, I'm pushing back. I, we use it as a tool to like sift, I guess it's a good sifting tool to get a, a you know, analytical look at things, but we still mm -hmm. use human ingenuity to assess what to do with that information. But um I don't know if I answer your question, but Bill, you, you were the one I was, really, I was you, thinking. I thought on. it was Eric. You were who I was wanting to ask the question to because you you said that you you do marketing and probably you got tons of fly by nighters that are running around that that are telling dealerships that they can do this and get them there and this that and the other. You know, yeah. like you say, promising promising the world, over promising and under delivering and just messing it up for when you walk in there. So yeah, what you, but so what do you do, Eric? What was it was to me. Sorry, I was on mute. Oh, yeah, Eric, I was going to ask him. Yeah, um, it, people, right? So, like, you differentiate. I think Brian gave it a fantastic example. It's We basically do the exact same thing. You run stuff through a normal campaign, but what gets noticed is when you pop out of that and give a human message, you look at who you're looking to contact, you say something personal about what's happening today, what's happening with what you see on them, and then you, you make the effort to make it real, make it human, make a real connection from it. So, so the, the key word here is connection. We've just seen one of the greatest examples of disconnecting willfully from your audience. Um, does everybody remember when they started doing the beer commercials with taste, a uh, taste bet, you know, great, less filling, and, mm -hmm. and they would put disparate people on. John Madden would break through the wall. They, they put famously George Steinbrenner on and Billy Martin, and at the end he said, you're fired. All those disparate things and yet people liked it. it. It endeared themselves to people that were sitting in a bar drinking a beer. And they went from there from taking somebody that was transsexual. And, and basically, I mean, how do you live with, with taking billions of dollars of value away from a company? Because you never thought to think this might offend somebody. 
Okay, I'm Jewish. Showing up in a Nazi uniform to promote something to Jewish people is probably not the best idea. Mm -hmm. And this, once again, is the danger of leaning on robots, leaning on things that have an input but don't have a human emotion or any kind of gauge to say, maybe this is a bad idea. Right, right. And left unfiltered, like you said, it's just going to get worse. But we need it to get worse because the more it get worse, again, the more people will value. It's like COVID. You know, after COVID ended, you ever did anybody besides me really value a handshake as much as you did after COVID? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was crazy how little things meant so yeah. much. And it's going to happen again where we're going through this cycle with this AI and this online stuff. But in a while, people are going to want to just hear somebody say some real shit. Excuse my French. That's, yeah, just well, that's, that's why that's why, in my opinion, that's why, you know, digital retailing you know, had the perfect storm and Carvana's development had the perfect storm. COVID created a lot of artificial events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. all these art, but that people now are, I mean, look at all the events we go to and things. I mean, we can't wait to hug each other and be with each other. And it's not surprising to me that digital retailing has fallen by the wayside because instinctively we want to do business with other humans. And in this business, I can't think of another business where that's more the <laughs> Right. Well, I think Maybe the key, one of the keys in automotive is just to be aware of all the hype cycles, right? So right. You, you just go back the last five years and see all the things that were supposed to displace this or that or re <laughs> replace this or that. And it's somebody's job. It's always somebody's job. They're getting paid really well to get us all fired up and, and worried because fear mo motivates people. Right. And so, I mean, how many of us are really worried about blockchain taking our jobs now that was supposed to take our jobs right and now it's ai and i'm not saying there's not reason for it but that's why i shared the gardner hype cycle on the chat here in the group Thank um, you, because just be aware of that i've been in tech for 20 years and so back in the dot-com days and i've been around long we all have we've seen the cycles right so that's what you know as the old residents and there's a bunch of young people coming up in the industry but we've been through a few cycles and nothing really phases me anymore. I just go, okay, that's probably going to peter out. What's what's after that? Because that's going to be where people land emotionally and directionally. And it's better to position there because there's a higher probability you're going to find opportunity at that point than trying to guess like where you should be on the continuum of this this S curve. The difference Bill, between you, probability you, and possibility. You know, certain things are possible. But are they probable? And I and I, I think that that's something that people need to value those. I mean, really weigh those two two peas uh, a lot more. I, I'm I'm not a fashion maven by by any. I think I'm anti style. But if you follow fashionable, you realize that things that are way out all of a sudden come way back in. You know, the old thing, everything that's, that's old is new again. So the thing that's always going to return back is being human. Mm -hmm. I mean, think <laughs> about how people are are so willing to overpay for a good service or being pampered or just being a little bit better taken care of. Look at Roof Chris. It's not going to come from a machine. Roof Chris, nobody, well, you spend three times as much for a steak at Roof Chris than you do at Outback and they got their meat from the same exact freaking, uh, you know, butcher place. But it's- Wait, the, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. So, so you got Bill Roth and Paul Brobson and you're talking about Roof Chris. And when we made our partnership, you took him to McDonald's and we had to split up a lot. <laughs> I don't know, Brobson, there's something going on here. I got to refer back to my AI exec. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would say to back to Bill's point, you know, uh, it's kind of like we've been given all of these AI arrows to put in our quiver, right? And we, we're standing in a field, there's a big forest in front of us, and we know the targets are in there. So a lot, of, are you going to be the person that just starts shooting wildly and hoping that it hits a target somewhere in the dark? Or are you going to carry the arrow and the quivers the quiver with the arrows in it closer and closer until you actually get into the forest a little bit. Be cautious. Don't walk into the forest without your arrows in case you need them for something else. Right. Well, yeah. it's the old, it's the old GM thing. I unfortunately was part of General Motors. I've been doing this a while where they came out of the phase where they must have been smoking crack because Cadillac came out with the 468, the diesel and the six. Uh, and then followed it with the 4100. I think they're still solid fiddle off lawsuits. <laughs> and our criticism as dealers back then was ready, fire, aim. I think that's what Bill's talking about. 
Let's just throw it the hell out there, see what sticks, and let's not worry about the consequences. And as we've seen, it can be disastrous financially into your business plan. Yeah. In a major yeah, way. this is not a moment where it's like, you know, you, you have this fear of missing out. Some people will have that. I would just be, I would watch the early adopters for a while and watch and, and, and avoid the landmines. I don't think you're going to be late to the game or dealers are going to have some huge strategic advantage over you because they jumped on the AI train early. I think their train's going to go off the tracks and they're not going to focus on the things that they really need to focus on. I see the AI thing and chat GPT and all these things as a real distraction at a time when the industry is recoiling back to its normal self. Yeah. People need to be very right. Right. Sales. They need to be and they're working gonna rely on, on these they don't need to be looking at outside distraction. They have enough distractions within their four war four walls, for God's sake. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Precisely. And, but that's what I'm saying. And there's people who, I don't know what the percentage, maybe Larry, you know, but let's just say 5% of the workforce in dealerships today never lived through one of these, these cycles. Yeah, by, by the laptop better, the computer better, huh? Uh, goodbye, Brian. Hold on, I got to find my battery, my charger. <laughs> I think but the industry point, needs to focus on, on two things, uh, customer experience uh, like in right. deal in dealership experience and its own ethics because Amen. the the ethics um have been an issue the last few years and mm. if you're reading the tea leaves and you're seeing what the consumer is saying about how much they give a give a rip or, or don't about dealerships it's concerning and so with, with the, like the adm with the the markups and just the the old games and 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 i agree that you know dealerships need to get back to selling and what you do, Larry, but you do it in an ethical way. You teach you teach dealerships how to sell um, in a way that is self-effacing and that creates long-term relationships. And uh, those those are the things. These these other things, you know, these are technological wonders, and but they're distractions. I, I think you were just saying that, uh, Paul. But um, the, that's where the rubber meets the road for the consumer, right? Is can I trust this dealership and what's the experience I'm going to have, you know, and I'm all for omni channel. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm not saying AI can't be a part of that, but at the end of the day, it's, it, you know, how, how much of a trust uh, component is in place for me to do business with this, this dealership, because if the, if the industry doesn't watch itself, it's going to get regulated to the, you know, to the nth degree right. and it'll be a completely different business. Think how smart insightful. Say, think how list, smart, but... well, Troy, think how insightful what he just said is. We're at the trust oh. scale. We're on, we're at the bottom of the trust scale with politicians already. and drug dealers, and now and... we're going to take an industry that already was distrusted, and then we started hitting people with high over list prices, and now the the, the way to solve that is to get robots involved. No, because I, I can tell you right now that the crap experience I had with a, a dealership here in the, the Dallas area yesterday, and there's not a damn thing that uh, any AI could have done to solve it. So <laughs> it's, it's like you said, Bill, it's the experience. And, and I think what happens is with all this stuff and, and it being in the, you know, the marketing industry now for you know, almost 30 years and seeing, oh, well, there's this next new shiny tool and this next new great. And everybody is looking for that thing. It's going, okay, this is going to solve all my problems. This is the one thing that's going to make all my problems go away. And that's just, there's nothing out there that's going to do that. You, you've got to look at, as, as Bill said, these are tools and things, but it's when you rely on on things to uh, create interaction that are, is not human, you're not going to have that, that long-term relationship. Again, and I think that when we look at from a, a dealership perspective or any other business, it's it's customer lifetime value. And you can't create that, that relationship that's going to continue on in, in building that relationship with that customer through... AI. Troy, you it's said destroy it, Troy. But you Troy's can, you can put it guy. to sleep real quick. Troy, you What's that? You can put Kennedy. it to sleep real quick. You familiar well, with Dan Kennedy, right, Troy? Yes. Now, now those of you who are here that are, you know, that are in marketing, Dan Kennedy's like the godfather. You got all of this new stuff. He's been in the game forever, right? Mm -hmm. All of this new shiny stuff comes out, all of this technology. And you got him, Dan Kennedy, that is still using some of the same just people-based tactics that worked back in the 70s and in the 80s. You know, this guy was a marketer for president, and he's kicking ass of all of these techies, him and Russell Brunson right now. Are, are Blocking the, the, 
to basic blocking and tackling. Yep. And, and doing things that are, are, are you know, right. again. classically trained marketing, not tactical marketing. The other thing is, think mm -hmm. about guys and the, the consumer at no time in the next whatever period you want to pick two years, five years, whatever is going to say, I'm picking a dealership based on their AI and testing. <laughs> Look at that. yeah. um, that's the one I'm going for. So if you're a dealer or you work with dealers, remind them of that because that's like, Come on, man. Nobody cares about that out in the field. You're just doing it so you can say, oh, yeah, we're using this on these calls. <laughs> guys, yeah. guys, it's, it's, it's very simple. Everything that we've talked about tonight is about customer experience. It's not about the tools or anything else. We're all looking to find the best customer experience, whether we use a calculator, we use a computer, mm -hmm. we use videos, we use this, we use that. We're all looking to train our teams and coach our teams to get customer service. I, I came back into the business after being retired for five years. And I did it because the customer experience level that I received purchasing a car was so horrific that I knew the, the business was broken. So it, yes, it's, it's got me back in and I love it. And I've met all kinds of great people. Most of the people on this panel have, have all become friends. Uh, and it's we're all looking at the same focus point. We have to improve. And the only way we improve is not through a, a machine, but through human interaction. And that's where we got it. You got it, man. That, it looks the like problem. folks we didn't hit. I don't know where my main man went. Um, the problem is... Brian, I was say the problem is, is is people just want want things to be easy. Right. Everybody wants the easiest way out, and and generally speaking, the easy way. You know, I'm not saying to try to overcomplicate things, but developing relationships is work. I mean, it, it takes mm -hmm. time and it takes effort, and you can't just put it on a, on a you know, an auto dial and go, okay, I'm going to reach out to my. <laughs> my 50 closest friends and send them an automated message. They'd be like, what, what, what the hell's wrong with you? That doesn't even That's work a good way anymore. to lose like your 50 day, friends. You, That's you exactly. Can't send out the one template anymore. Like all of my emails now, if they're in my cycle, they get general stuff. But when I'm really reaching out, I have to literally go on LinkedIn and go to Google and research these people's store, research them just so I can have that one little something special that shows, Hey, I did some research. I'm just not some person calling and send it for myself and that shit stands out but it does take time you know it's about to be 20 25 minutes of research per call you know that you set up but at the end of the day like you like you say troy it, it really it, it you got to do it and it still works well or do you want to and i always say do you want a, transaction, quantity, a, a, right? a transaction? transaction do you want a transaction or a relationship Relationship. You know, yep, it's, right. it's, it's a lot easier to to make money off a relationship than it is off of a transaction Mm. It is. It is. Rhonda, did my man Larry? I know we over eight o'clock. Did he? Did he? Did he jump on? I'm right here. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know where he was at. Yeah, man, you know, for, for us to go a few minutes and you not say yeah. something, I didn't know what happened. I couldn't see you on my, on my, on my thing. <laughs> he I wasn't talking to be, for to be quiet. Hey, hey, I get in trouble. For talk. I get in trouble for being quiet. I think I'm going to go talk to my robot friends. They're much nicer than you guys. <laughs> hey, Brian, that wasn't a hate joke, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Excuse me. You're going to talk about somebody vertically challenged wearing that shirt? You're like, <laughs> Zipperachi is dead, so he doesn't sue you. Hey, Larry, it's it's called confidence. It's not he got the shirt unbuttoned and everything. Man. Larry, relax. He got the shirt undone everything, kicking back. I was, <laughs> Great. Now, now he wants to to Tom up. Jones. He's going to break into song now. <laughs> Hey, uh, on that it's note, I think I'm going to leave then. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank. listen, th all kidding aside, you have no idea how much we value you, you and your opinions, and we thank you. And if you'll tune in when you can, we'll be here every Wednesday. We're going to try to come up with a topic that makes sense, that's pertinent. But, but we welcome you and we welcome your input. And let me just say this to end it up. Um, the hell with robots, because every one of you has become my friend, and I'm, I'm lucky and blessed. And that's because I was crazy and silly and I showed I cared a little bit and you cared back. And I defy you to find a robot that can do that. OK, Amen. So let's not forget our strength is that we're human and we're likable and we can make a connection. We, we appreciate every damn one of you. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. 
Um, we're going to get uh, John Lockett to talk a little faster. I'll talk a little slower. The whole show should equalize itself. That hey, hey Larry, you know. can I do one? Can I do one public service announcement real quick? Please. <laughs> so I don't know why. I'm surprised you didn't pick you, frankly. But then I guess the show would have to be three hours long. Um, but David Long entrusted all things used cars to me to watch oh. this week. So um, oh the, sweet. Uh, all things used cars. If you join that, it's uh, nine o'clock Eastern time on Friday mornings on Clubhouse. Love to have you in there. I got a great, great panel. It's a lot of the usual suspects who are in there, but um, I'm just asking them questions. I don't have any of the answers, but we're talking about a master class in used car technology. What are the essential tools you need to run your used car operations in today's environment? Um, I've got some of the best folks in the industry. I got Brian Kramer. I got Danny Zaslaski from VinQ, I've got a couple of guest stars, I've got dealers, I've got Green Peas. It's going to be a great show. I hope everybody can join. I will be. That's 9 a.m. Eastern before, Standard Bob. Time on Clubhouse. Yeah, All thank you. Awesome. Good. Right. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. This was a great episode. Thanks for coming. Sorry about all the cursing. Thank you, Rhonda. Good night.